So this problem, we're going to deal with uh, substring search. In fact, uh, given a pattern and a text, we're going to look for the pattern in the text. Uh, there are a number of algorithms for doing that. Um, the brute force algorithm, which is very inefficient. And then we have this very, very uh, genius algorithm called the KMP algorithm, uh, which is very, very, um, uh, a very nice algorithm. Um, and it does have some complicated stuff, such as building a DFA to recognize the string and then running this, uh, the text through this DFA to recognize substrings. So let's go over the process of building the DFA. So that's the key idea here is to build the DFA. Once you build the DFA, it's going to be uh, fairly trivial to see how it works. So building the DFAs, if we're building a DFA for this uh, string, substring that we're searching, A, B, A, A, B, A. So we have a, a number of states, um, as you know, in a DFA. So if you see an A, so this means we transition from zero to state one. If you see a B, we transition from one to two. So this means that if you're in state two, you have seen AB. Then similarly, you can transition A, A, B, A. And then six becomes the accept state. So now the question is, what happens if you uh, get something else. Say, for example, if you got a B. If you got a B, you have to stay here because you haven't seen the A here to continue to transition. And here, if you see an A, this means that you can stay at 1. This means that you have seen an A, so you try to remember the strings that you have seen from the text. So the nice thing about this algorithm is it tried to remember the text you have seen uh, in the text, uh, in the in the uh, characters you have seen in the text. Now, from now on, it gets a little bit tougher now. So the question would be: If you get an A, you transition. But if you get a B, what are you going to do? Now, let's think about this way. Now, if you're in two, that means you have seen an A B. That's why you're in two. Now, if you see another B, this means this is what we now know about the text. We have seen A B B. So now to determine how much to go back when they fail, we have to do the following. We look at the suffixes, which are like B, B, B. Those are the suffixes, longest suffix, which is a prefix. But in this case, I cannot find any prefixes that is the longest suffix. I don't have a B here, or I don't have B, B here. So in this case, you're going to go back to zero. You're going to go back to zero. So if you see a B, now let's apply the same thing to here. Suppose I see a B, what are you going to do? So here's the, the, the point here. Now, if you're in state three, you have seen A, B, A. Now you see a B. So that means this is what you know from the text. So let's look for the longest suffix, which is a prefix. So in this case, we realize that the A, B is the longest suffix, which is also a prefix. So this means I can go back to state AB. So the state AB would be here. So let's apply the same thing here. Suppose I see an A, what are you going to do? So at this point, I'm going to, I know that if I'm in state 4, I have seen ABA, now I see another A. Now let's look for the longest suffix, which is a prefix. So in this case, A is the longest suffix, which is a prefix. So I should go back to the state that recognize an A. Do the same thing here. A, B, A, A, B. If you're in this state and when you see a B, so A, B, A, A, B, and suppose you see a B, and this means let's look for the longest suffix, which is a prefix. But in this case, I cannot find a suffix, which is a prefix of this one here. Right? I cannot find any suffix, which is a prefix of this. This means that I will go back to zero. Now, let's take a look at this one here. Uh, this is the accept state, so you're done here, right? So if you fill out the table, you can do the transition states. A means I go to 1. B means I go to 2. A means I go to 3. 
A means I go to 4. So I'm re these are the matching transitions. Uh, B means I go to 5. A means I go to 6. And 6 is the accept state. According to the table, if you see a B, you're going to stay here. If you see an A in state 1, you're going to stay in state 1. If in, in state 2, you see a B, you're going to go back to state 0. In 3, you're going to, uh, if you see an A, you're going to go back to state 2. If you see a 4, you're going to go back to state uh, Four and a, if you see an A, you go back to state 1. And then when you're in 5 and you see a B, you're going to go back to state 0. So this is how your uh, thing would look like. Now, to show you how this will work with the text, so let's suppose that we have a text. So we have A, B, A, A, B, B, and then A, B, A, A, B, A. So we are trying to recognize this pattern in the text. So let's see what happens. You're here. When you see an A, you're going to go to state 1, state 2. Then you see a B. When you're in state 1, you see a B. You go to state 2. You see another A. Now you go to state 3. Then you see another A. You go to state 4. So this means that you have seen A, B, A, A. You're in state 4. Now then you see another B. You go to state 5. Now you see another B, this means you're in state 5, you see another B, that means I should go back to 0. So I'm going to start, go back to 0, now you see an A, go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this means as, as you send the text, now you'll see as soon as you see the text, you see that uh, as soon as you see the, uh, when you go to the, the transitions, the state 6, you have accepted it. So this is how the algorithm works with the text. Once you build a machine, you can send this text to the machine, and the machine will say, OK, here's the output. We recognize that. So second part of this problem is that if you're given an incomplete KMP table, we're trying to determine the string. Obviously, if you know the string, you can determine the KMP table. That's what we did in the previous problem. Now here, we're given partial entries, and we are supposed to figure out what the string is, and then maybe fill out the other entries. Now, doing a problem like this will get you to appreciate the, the genius of KMP algorithm. So let's start looking at this uh, problem. So uh, we'll start with column 0. In column 0, if you, in state 0, if you see an uh, a, you're going to stay, is, stay in state 0. This means you must be going to state 1 if you see a B. So B is a match transition. This means that every all the columns must have exactly one match transition. We can apply the same logic here. And this means that if you're in state 1, you see an A, you go to state 2. So this means that you have the string A here. I can also draw the, the picture right now. So we have a B here, we go to state 1, when you see an A, you go to state 2. We can also do the fail transition things. So if you have, if you in state 0, you see an A, you're going to state there. And then here, when you see a, uh, when you're in state 1, you see a B, you're going to go back to 1. So this means I have seen a B here. So this is our, our, our DFA, and here's the table. Now, let's apply the same arguments here. This is more straightforward. So this means that if you this has to be a B because we, we are in state 2. We see a B. Now we're going to go to state 3. Now, same is true for uh, state 5. When you're in state 5, you're going to uh, you see an A. This means it's got to be an A. You're going to go to state 6. So let's do that. So we have 4, 5, 6, and 7. And finally, the 8 is the transition. So we know when you're in state 5, you see an A, you go to state 6. And the uh, this problem says when you're in state 7, you see an A, you go to state 8. So that's an accept state. So this is where we accept the state, accept the string. Accept the string. Okay. All right. So we can do a few others here. Like, for example, this must have, it must be an A because you need to have exactly one transition state. So this must be going to 7. If you're in state 6, you see an A, you're going to go to 7. 
All right, now the 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 next question is how we're going to fill out the missing pieces here. Right, so this also we know that this is an A uh, because you're in state 7, you see a A and you went to state 8 which is the accept state. So in this case you accept. All right, so let's figure out what the other things are. Uh, this is where the the importance of the uh, Kunut Morris uh, Pratt algorithm understanding that comes into play. So, for example, this is the big clue here. Now, this phi gives us a lot of things, and that uh, we would uh, need to know. For example, the five says that if you are in state six, if you're in state six, you have seen B A B, and then maybe two other characters. We don't know what they are. And then you have seen an A, and now you saw a B. So what this is saying is that when you're in state 6, you saw a B, you jump back to 5. So what that implies is that that character just before you came to A here must be a B. It must be this character here. Now that also gives us the clue that the one before that should be an A. It must be this character here. In other words, this thing should be matching to that. So notice by just by having that information that when you got to 6, you have seen an A and now you saw a B, and we had to jump back to 5. This means when you got to the 5, the last two characters must have been A, B, and hence we know the string. Now once you know the string, you can complete the rest of it. So we have at least solved the a puzzle that when you're in state three, you see a, uh, you see an A. You're going to go to state four, and so this means you're going to state four. And then if you're in state four, you see a B. You're going to go to state five. So we have solved the uh, puzzle here by figuring out, and five was the big thing that gave us this clue.